Hello, Ken Spriggs here uh, with part two of uh, the buddy build with myself and Tim Steiner, the glue and paper guy, and working on the Star Wars ATST. Uh, and he's working on his uh, heavily modified paper version, and I'm working on my Bandai uh, plastic version. So uh, let me go ahead and show you, first of all, my part of it and uh, what I completed on the the kit itself. I started building the actual uh, ATST and did a little bit of base coating on it and some some painting on it to, to get that part of it started. Uh, and then uh, Tim is working on uh, some of his bases and showing us how he does those. So let's go ahead and take a look first of all at, um, at my build of the kit itself. So I put together the bottom part of the body, the centerpiece here, and the two legs. Quite a lot of parts, a lot of parts in this kit. As you can see, a bunch of sprues. Some of them are very tiny. I'm really not going to go over showing you how to put it together because it's just follow the instructions, which is all I did. I'm not familiar with this particular one, and I haven't built it before, but just follow the instructions. Take out a couple pieces at a time, put them together. It does have some uh, some posable elements like the legs, because you got well, you got these extra pieces. You can see this whole thing moves up and down, and it moves out. That kind of thing. So, which will be helpful because when I want to do something with one of the legs bent down going into the water and one of the legs still up on the ground i can do that and i can make it look like it's all falling apart and kind of in it i want it to be kind of in a pose where it's starting to fall down into this thing and it's it's kind of cockeyed that kind of thing it'll be permanently attached of course to the base but um but i can i can move it around and and give it kind of an action pose so all right so those parts are done so now i'm going to move on to working on the um the top piece which i guess you'd call it the cockpit or the the head of it and start getting that finished up i'm going to kind of start putting that together because i want to figure out what parts i'm going to have kind of bowing out with an explosion and that sort of thing now, I did look at these, and I tried to think of a way to run a wire down through, but these legs are made up of so many different parts, some of them solid, some of them opened up. It would have been really hard to do that. So, what I figure that I will do is, just like this thing has some cables on it, you can see right there, I'm going to make the wire, I only need really one coming down one of the legs, I can make it look like a cable. And just blend it into the kit and run it down through the machinery and have it coming out so so that shouldn't be too much of a problem i'll get and get it together first and then we'll then i'll start looking at that and figure out what to do with it so all right All right, so I put together the entire kit, as I showed from the stills before this. Now, I didn't glue it together because it goes together pretty easily as a snap kit. There were a few tiny little pieces that I glued on. Uh, like for some reason they made, um, I can find it. Like these little two little circles 
do not know why they made those separate pieces. <laughs> There's a little pin there. You got to press it on. And then that thing was so fiddly. I actually lost one of them. So I glued them on. Uh, and then because there's there's three or four on each leg there's supposed to be one right down here at the bottom on this side you can see it's over here so I broke that one off of there to glue up on the other spot that you're gonna see because this leg is gonna be underwater this will be the leg that's that's being submerged and falling down so I figured I could just leave that one off of there uh, a few of the hoses I glued into place, but nothing nothing major. I just snapped together Chewbacca and stuck him up there. He looks kind of cool. Uh, you got your weapons on the side and over here and this big one right here. And a lot of these, like I said, are movable. Like this can move up and down. That's poseable. These ones can move. The legs move. And there were also several options that you could switch out. So, for example, here's the um, here's the window shutters that are sticking up. There's other versions that are closed that are inside. You have um, let's see what other options were there. Oh, the hatch on the top. You can have it sticking open, or you can have it shut, or you can have Chewbacca sitting in it. And certainly you can move the legs and that kind of thing. There's also some different, uh, two different pieces that snap in here and over here. I guess the idea is that it's supposed to keep it solid. If you take it out, there's another one that doesn't do it. And then you can have it movable, that kind of thing. So, all right. But I wanted to get an idea of, of how the whole thing was going to look and how it's going to be set up and all that. And that'll give me some ideas to work forward as far as trying to figure out the diorama and how I'm going to have it all set up. Now, one of the things that, um, like I said, I want to do is have an explosion starting to come out. I'm just wondering, the problem is that these walls are pretty solid. Other than this piece here, these two panels, and on the other side... This, this whole front is one piece, and then the back is one piece. Now, these are separate. This is separate. This little dome part is separate. I could have those, like, coming out and literally sticking on to the expanding explosion, which, um, ironically, I'm going to be using expanding foam. It won't be expanding, of course, when I put it in, but I can have it kind of bursting out as though it's just starting to explode and maybe these are on the end of it and kind of cockeyed a bit. But I'll kind of play with that and see. But it's a cool little kit, for sure. I've never built this. And certainly, it's going to be painted and weathered. And I did watch the, um, the episode again, and they do lob a grenade in through one of the windows. So, but it's kind of falling down on its side when they do that. But I'm going to use a little artistic license. Now, one thing I did notice is that there are no logs over the water. So, it was dark, and they kind of built some barricades out of logs on either side. So, there was an opening coming down the middle where there was one of the water pits. And I guess the idea is that the water pits are usually pretty shallow. And so they show at one scene where they're down there digging and making it deeper. So this thing will actually fall down into it. And maybe that's why it was willing to step in the water. Well, it kind of goes to the edge and then one of its legs slips off and it falls down in. So, But it gives them an opportunity to, uh, to lob a grenade into it. So I want to kind of play with that and get an idea of how that's going to work. And... Uh, and it's also very dirty and, and beat up. We don't really see it. I don't think we see it in the daylight. I'm going to have to watch the episode a couple more times. But we mostly see it at night. But it's, it's definitely been sitting out in the forest. Uh, I believe the um, uh, Imperial soldiers left it behind. And then these, these scavengers that live in the woods 
came across it or got a hold of it somehow. So they were using it to um, to terrorize these villagers and steal their food. So it's probably been sitting out in the woods for a while and just kind of got rusty and messed up. Plus it has the glowing red eyes, which I'm definitely going to duplicate. So, so I think that'll be cool. I think it'll be neat with the idea with the glowing red eyes and then the beginning of the explosion coming out and it will be, you know, obviously flame covered like yellow and orange and that kind of thing. So I think they'll go together. Just wondering if I can also do something with maybe these panels and have them starting to expand, but I'll be playing with it. But it's definitely a cool little model, so I can do a lot of cool things with it. And it's a decent size. It's a pretty good size here, too, so. All right. So uh, now that I've got that complete, I'm going to move on to starting to hash out my diorama in the next video. And then trying to uh, get an idea of how that's all going to be set up. All right. All right, so here's a base coat I went ahead and put on to the ATST. So I decided to do that first and just get some general painting done before I do any kind of modifications as far as explosions or lighting. Just so I'm not going back and doing it later, I just think it's better to have it on first. So I first put on some dark gray over most of it. I put it on kind of patchy, as you can see, because I wanted it to be a little bit spotty because the thing's old and it's been probably sitting out in the woods for a while so it's going to get weathered as well and be a lot dirtier uh, then i went back over it with a um with the sky gray to lighten it up a bit and then in the end i just went over with some flat white and ended up with the look that i have now which is just kind of a, a gray which is what it is generally i left the darker up inside where it would get a lot more dirt and it's going to be weathered a lot more by the way too so all right so now that i have it where i want it to be for the base coat and i didn't do anything on the inside at all the inside is not going to have any kind of detail that you're going to see i'm not going to have it visible you're going to see some red lights for the uh, windows and then i'm going to have some of these parts coming away for the explosion part but for the rest of it, you're not really going to see the interior. You're not going to see any figures. You're not going to see anything like that. Uh, and then the whole thing's going to be weathered, and I'm going to do some, some rusting effects. We don't really see it too much. It's mostly in the dark, but it's, it's obviously pretty beat and dirty. So I'm going to do a lot of weathering on it as well. So I may do a little bit of that just to kind of get the general overall look before I start taking parts back off. And, and none of these are glued on. I did not glue any parts of these on at all. It's all removable again. And it's, it's okay if some parts are not painted underneath, that sort of thing. A few things I glued on, like the, the hoses. You can see like right there, I glued those in place. These ones up here just to make them stay a little bit better. And, and those are gonna be detailed as well. So I'm also gonna do some detail painting to, to give them different colors and make the thing look like a real machine uh, before I do any dissecting or explosions or things like that, so, all right.
All right, so I used a little more colors on it to give it kind of a little more rusted look. I used some hull red, and uh, then I mixed a little bit of white in with it, and I did just some different airbrushing and some speckling and things like that. And again, this is still just the base coat of the paint. I wanted it to have different tones, and, and I just tried to keep it random, not any particular... Um, pattern per se. I also took a little bit of uh, JA Green and I put that on there too along some of the edges just to kind of give you some tones of some green because it's in the forest and it would have been in there a lot and I'll probably do some some mossy kind of effects on it as well once I get going but again this is just the um, this is just the base coat the base paint colors that I'll then work on after that using some oils and weathering powders and maybe even some some of the um, terrain material like grass and and weeds and things like that once I get the base going the diorama since this thing would be out in the woods a lot and it's pretty dirty and disgusting so but I think it's a nice palette to start with And it just gives enough random tones to the armor so it's not really gray anymore so much as it's a bunch of different things. You can even see some splattering that I did along here with some of the, the airbrush. All right. So one other thing I want to do just on kind of the base colors is I want to go back in with some other colors and I want to paint up the guns and these ones here, and then the, like the cables underneath, things like that, just to give them a little different color, maybe use some metallics and things like that to kind of bring that out as well before I'm ready to, to consider the base coat just done for this at this point. <laughs> All right, so I finished up some final details on what I'm calling just the base coat of my ATST. So I did some metallic. I had to pull apart some of the parts to get at certain things. Uh, well, actually, I started with some rubber black for the hoses underneath and a little bit of chrome silver. And also the ones right here on the front. Did have a little bit of a problem. <laughs> Like I said, I didn't really glue these parts down, but they were on there a little bit tight. Um, so you can see that one little flap right there. There's one that's supposed to be on the other side. And when I pulled that off, it broke off and went flying across the room. So I have to try to locate that and see where it went to, which is frustrating because there's really not a lot of places it could have gone to, but you know how things are with the carpet monster. So I have to try to find that, or if not, then I'll rig up something and just pretend like part of that was broken off. But I painted those up. Uh, I also painted up the weaponry for now. So I did some metallic gray on this side gun. I did some uh, um, gun metal on this side with some little chrome silver highlights. Same with the chrome silver on the front and some gun metal on the front one too. And these aren't finished. They're just temporarily highlighted. So this is what I'm starting with. And then I want to go on and do some initial working out how I'm going to do the electronics and how I'm going to do the explosion effects. So, but in the meantime, I wanted to have most of this painted, but there's still a lot more painting that's going to be done. A lot more weathering, a lot more accents and metallics and things like that. So it's by no means done. 
it's just temporary for the moment. And I can still remove a lot of parts as needed in order to do what I need to do. So, all right. So that's going to wrap up my base coat colors for right now. And, uh, and the next step will be to move on to figuring out some of the effects in the lighting. All right. So I'm glad how that turned out. And uh, I'll be working, as I said, in the future on getting the lighting effects going on it and then of course the diorama so let's go ahead and take a look at what tim has been working on and um and take a look at the bases that he's that he's put together i'm the glue and paper guy today i'm going to tell you a tale of three bases this is the first of several installments in my buddy build with my much admired colleague ken spriggs Ken's history includes a lot of dioramas, so I've tried to rise to that mark. Uh, recently been able to integrate my laser cutter into this whole paper modeling process, and that's represented here in a couple of ways. The ATST you see here is a test piece. This much done by hand, this much done on the laser, and is based on the laser. He's pretty good, but the poor thing can't stand on his own. I'm going to try to rectify that in the next two revs. This, of course, is the original and uh, made by the gentleman who uh, is SF Papercraft uh, out of Japan. Excellent place for paper Star Wars patterns and some very nice stuff that he's done on his own. So the tale of three bases. I needed to support this because I, I'm not going to get rid of a pretty little thing like this. So I've detailed this and, and made foot pads for it on the laser. This guy is straight up terrain, just like uh, you'll see in hundreds of train modelers uh, examples. And this was the first thing I ever actually cut with my laser cutter. We get a closer look at each of the three of these, and uh, then I have some slideshows of the process of the construction, shots of the laser, shots of the, the progress of the, uh, the terrain. And then subsequent episodes, we'll talk about how we build this guy. I'm, obviously this go round, I'm starting from the bottom up. So I have this much of him from, from here to here uh, design and some test cuts made. Let's take a closer look at these bases one at a time from above. We'll go through a, a look at the construction process for each after that. I've got a lot of heroes in this maker game. Adam Savage is one of them. He asserts that he builds things three times. Apparently that's uh, something that I do as well. By the time I've done I will have built a test and I will have built a, a a final and then arrange the files to create the thing in, as a kit uh, purely to satisfy myself and the third will be much smoother and better than the first. Since I'm going to have three of these I have to put them somewhere. This is the simplest of the three bases. It's dramatic, it's effective. This is the first material I ever cut with my laser cutter. The resolution of the image is somewhat low because I made it so large so there's jaggies here. But the jaggies are not necessarily off theme, so I'm, I haven't struggled to sand them down, although you could. This is, uh, so this is mat board. This is foam core. That uh, uh, foam filled paper that they make uh, uh, school projects out of. I painted an example of this foam core with another material and the, the water in it warped it and ruined it. The paint that I used here was straight up Home Depot primer paint. And there was enough black and enough red to get this marvelous, dark, almost malevolent tone. I don't know if it comes through very clearly on the video or not, but it's dramatic as all get out in person. And we detailed the back and put a bit of a base on it so that it could stand up and was believable from all angles. The second of them is a straight up homage to uh, 
Ken Spriggs, who's an expert at dioramas. I used the inspiration of, of a series of folks on YouTube to understand how to do this. And quite honestly, I'll give myself a, an 8 out of 10 on this puppy. The idea was to have a, a, a uh, the idea was to have a dry wash because I didn't want to do a lot of grass. And I wanted to do the rocks, I wanted to add some terrain, and we have these goofy little scrub trees. This is made from the paper clay that Interstellar Modeler first suggested. If treated well, it's an excellent material. It uh, doesn't stick to half the things that you want to stick it to, so you almost have to assemble it separately, let it dry thoroughly, and then glue it into place. This happened, it was a combination of things that happened here. Straight up painting the rocks, you've seen that a hundred times on YouTube. That was the first one, that was the second one. These are the best because those are the last. Uh, and I glued the rocks in kind of where I imagined the water would push heavier material. Again, a base on the bottom. I was less worried about the, the foam cover on this one because, you know, you pretty much can't see it anyway. The complex base is base number three. And I almost ought to move the camera angle. I don't think I'm going to bother here. <clears throat> My little friend is a beautiful thing and I love him and I will not let him go. But he's also not capable of standing on his own. And while strong, he's fragile at the same time. So he needed a way to stand himself up. I could have done that better if I'd looked at my reference more clearly. I did not. So I invented it out of whole cloth. The movie miniature was propped up probably for auction by something that went out and went under the thighs and held it up by the thighs. This simply circles my uh, goofy bottom uh, on him. The, uh, the filming miniature actually has that bottom on there, but I promise you that there's no Chevrolet bow tie on it. It just looked like a motor to me, so I made it into a motor because I could. These uh, base elements here are laser cut, just freeform shapes laid out and then cut. A wooden pole with some uh, scrap parts from the assembly of the uh, of the ATST in there to hold it up and some dowel rod squared up as nice as I could and and uh, filled with a little uh, CA to to hide the grain. That's the money part of the thing. The true nerd understands that that says AT-ST in the Star Wars script and this is a tiny version of the uh, PNG used to create this. And that's dramatic as I'll get out in person too. I mean, it, it, uh, it's really strong. The laser doesn't do a very good job at this level because the line is so thin it doesn't cut through the through this material. I could probably do more if I handmade the shapes. So what I ended up doing is utilizing the layering that, that paper is naturally has and making it into more or less an engraving. This could have been engraved with a laser. I'm not sure if what would happen if you applied that much energy to paper for that long. Uh, a, uh, a laser cutter is a thing you're careful with because it can indeed catch materials on fire, and it will. Uh, it'll also burn your retinas. You, you treat these things with respect. Uh, nonetheless, that's a beautiful bit of detail. And my greatest hope is that this troika of trinkets rises to, to Ken's level.
All right, fantastic. So really good work there, Tim. I think that turned out really great on all of your different bases. Uh, certainly a different approach to each of them. Uh, the um, I really like the empire symbol with the red and the black cut out with your laser cutter. That looks really nice. Um, certainly the uh, the practical one that has the support stands for the larger version and has the little teeny uh, details on it as well with the symbol for the empire and the, the lettering and that sort of thing. Um, but especially the, um, the diorama. And uh, I don't know if Tim put it out in the video, but this is his first diorama that he's completed. So really good job on that. A lot of different materials, a lot of different approaches used on that. And uh, I think that turned out really great. So um, definitely look forward to seeing more of that. Uh, he, he showed a little bit of a tease of the larger version of the ATST. Really nice detail on that. I'm really excited to see how that's all going to come out. So, all right. So um, we will see you the next time on the next installment of this build. And uh, we'll continue on our progress in this buddy build for the ATST. Thanks a lot.